stripper. And you can find the time to spend with your actual family. Prime time with Isaac and Sue. Damn! What they on? All steroids and no carbs? Them are big ass kids. This is Prime Time. And I like you. We're growing up. Your source for the best in local, regional, and national sports. Oh, my goodness. Here are Isaac Ropp and Jason Sakanik with Prime Time on 1080 The Fan. I'm cooking on your grill. Hey, tomorrow, tune in at this time. This very time, Dan Lanning will be on. Although last week, he forgot to call us. Do you remember that? Yeah, but it was a little wonky because it was, you know, the... It was a yep, Wednesday call. It was a Wednesday. Yep, it was a Wednesday call. Yeah. So we give him a pass. I mean, the guy's been spot on every week. Yeah. We've interviewed him, but Although last think, week, he forgot. I think maybe we call him to task this week. Yeah, he felt bad. Stretch. He said he felt... He told yeah. Buckley, so I feel terrible. I feel terrible. You know, I feel terrible for you guys. He's a man that uh, likes to be punctual. So he needs to cut us all a big check. That's right. To make us, I will uh, say uh, probably over half of the times this season he's called us before the designated time, yeah. often by a couple minutes. Yeah, I think he wants to get him out of the way, you know. Yeah, I don't think it's his. Like, uh, oh, God. Yeah, look, he I looks at his schedule. Like, oh, God. It's not his priority. How about that? It's four o'clock. <laughs> we got to call these doofuses. What an Why opportunity. Um, where was I? Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> if you didn't cry. <laughs> Really? You don't have a pulse. Who was it? Was that... Uh, was I don't that, know. Somebody he, tweeted that. was that. the NFL guy. Was that Emmanuel... Uh, what is it? Uh, is it Ocho or... Emmanuel Ocho. Ocho. Yeah. yeah, I think he's the one that By the way, that, that guy's which, terrible. Yeah, I had to mute him. He yeah. is, but do you remember when he and his twin brother were like kicking ass at Texas? They were awesome together. Yeah, it turned out neither one of them ended up doing Correct. anything. But look, I, I, you know, he's a fine analyst. I think sometimes he does uh, some, some good breakdown stuff. But one, he yells a lot. And can we stop with the... Uh, like, you don't have a pulse. It was a really cool moment last night for <clears throat> LeBron and his family. But, dude, that – how the best way to put this, and this is why I didn't cry. Had that been a legit moment, it would have been emotional. Like, with the, you know, the Griffies were there. That was cool. Because Ken Griffey and his dad, that wasn't manufactured. They just – you know, they were both legit major league players, and, and the son went on to be one of the greatest ones of all time. The dad was still good enough to hang around for a bit. But – this couldn't have happened anywhere else because the only reason that that Bronny is there is because of his dad. Like, so it's it's just manufactured, and because of that, yeah, it's not as cool. It well, was an eye roll. Yes. I mean, it was nepotism at its finest. But it was it was it was cool for him. Like as I watched that and I saw the clip of LeBron being like, "Hey, you ready? You see the intensity." The mic'd up segment is the only authentic I, thing we've gotten out of that. I can't imagine what it would be like as a as a my, my son. Um, is now old enough. I mean, he's he's Bronny James's age. So, the idea that I could do anything like my that son is an idiot with my son. I I for that for a father son, I'm like, oh my god, that's amazing. But maybe we punt Rob's ass and get Iserman in here to do a radio show with you. Well, there you go. <laughs> Rob would be like, yeah, but like I, <laughs> perfect. I, I thought about this, and I'm not like I was not a good NFL player, but I was better than Bronny James. I was a better college player than Bronny James, and. No one in a regular season game, the, my dad had been the quarterback. They're not like, all right, uh, let's put that Sukanic in for three snaps and let him snap to his dad so we could have this emotional moment. Bronny James would not be in the NBA. He just wouldn't. He was bad at USC. The only reason he got drafted is because LeBron and, and, and Clutch made it happen. The only reason he's on an NBA roster right now is because LeBron made it happen. My God, they played him for three minutes, and then they got him out of the game, and that's probably the only time he'll ever play this season. The only reason that happened is because LeBron went to him and was like, you're doing this. So it's it's hard to, to have my heartstrings pulled when it's not real. It's, it's reality TV that got done to placate LeBron. Now, kudos for LeBron for being that powerful to get it done, and kudos for that family. His brother was there, the mom, everyone. What a cool moment for the family, but for the rest of us, we're sitting there being like, well, this is, a, it felt like the Kardashians. Like, you know, whenever you watch Kardashians or Laguna Beach or what's the, the real, the Below Deck is the one you like, right? Or, Below Deck's great show. Real right? Housewives. So all of those things are, they're real people that are doing semi-scripted things. They like, they set them up in situations where they know there's going to be drama and then they, they let them kind of react in real time. It's, it's fake reality. And what we saw last night was really cool and dramatic, just like some fight on Jersey Shore is, is dramatic and people eat it up, but it, it wasn't a real, 
authentic moment. The Griffies was a real authentic moment. The Gord- Gordie Howe and, and his kids, that's an authentic moment in hockey. Um, I'm trying to think of, of, of others because there's not many. This was this was more Kardashian than it was NBA. It's really well, but that's the NBA now. I mean, the NBA is kind of it's it's got this sideshow element to it. Yeah. And that fit right in. It's really quite remarkable how the Lakers have just handed LeBron their franchise. Pretty much. I mean, they got his podcast buddy to be coach. the coach yep. and they got his kid to get minutes, yeah. which would happen nowhere else. No. What's next is <laughs> wife is named GM. Well, didn't he basically pick the last head coach, Darvin Ham, who yes. was not yeah. good, and now they needed to get him out of there? So yeah. it's like his second coach. That Tomorrow we're going to read about Jeannie Buss gifting the entire franchise to LeBron's mom <laughs> with the quote, it's the least we could do. It's I just, mean, my God. It's just weird. It's it's just, well, and, and you it's rem- an eye roll. And you remember, this is what why LeBron left Miami, is LeBron tried these things in Miami, and Pat Riley was like, yeah, no. And so LeBron was like, well, I'm going to go somewhere where – I can do this. And, and he did it in Cleveland. He's doing it in L.A. And again, I, I do not begrudge him. If you have that kind of sway, by all means, use it. But you manufactured a really cool moment for you and your family. And kudos to you. That was a cool moment for you. How anyone else can look at that as anything other than scripted Kardashian TV I don't know. So if you cry watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Mm. then by all means, you may have gotten emotional at that. But What about the Orange County one? mm, It's tough. It's tough. They're a little bit trashier. They're a little trashier. Than the Beverly Hills ones. (laughs) Don't ask me how I know that. (laughs) This one, you know, it's... So I, I can appreciate it for what it is. I don't hate on LeBron. I don't hate on his kid. But that's, you know... I wonder if this will be his last season now that he's uh, it, it made this. that dream come true. Yeah. It feels kind of like the last box he wanted to check. I mean, I don't it doesn't seem like they're in some championship window there right now. I mean, I we've got a bunch of aging superstars and Well, they got Bronny. <laughs> well, you've got Bronny. But I think he had a rebound, right? He played 3 minutes, went 0 for 2. Uh, I do think he got a rebound and then, you know, they sat him down and you know, I I wonder how many how many times do you have to do this before the Lakers have placated him enough where they can either stop playing him three minutes a night or send him down to the G league? Or is this one of those things where because you're LeBron, this gets to go on all year. Or do you go and do this as a road show? All, all your well, away opponents. You're going to find like out. That. You're going to find out how much, well, we know LeBron has all the pull, but you're going to find out to what extent that is. Yeah. With that question right yeah. there. You are because you know, the Lakers should send him to the G league. Yes. And maybe try to develop him or something. Yeah. I don't know. Unless you're not but, in, unless you know that you can't develop him, so you just put him on the bench like Jack Haley. Remember when Dennis Rodman toward the end of his career, they would they would anyone where Rodman played, they would go get Jack Haley, who was a big white stiff, and he was Rodman's buddy, and I guess he was a he was like a stable pony for Rodman. He could kind of um control him a little bit and so they would maybe maybe that's what this is is you're like dude it's the 15th guy on the bench whatever if it makes lebron happy sit him on the end of the bench and 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 if that happens then you know that they really don't think that he can ever develop into anything because then it's just he's there until lebron retires and then you you cut him so did they backpedal on the whole he won't go to the g league thing because initially before the draft they're like oh don't expect him to be a two-way guy like He's only signing a one like they, a. That's what the agent said. Right. So is, has there been? Have they pulled it, back it, off that? It feels like that, that. There's been a lot of talk about him going to the G League. I mean, at he some should point. if he wants to play basketball. But that's what I'm saying. This may be one of those things where the, the like the the Bucks and Giannis's brother. Like you're not trying to develop him. It's you will know if he goes to the G League. Then maybe the Lakers actually think that somewhere down the road, maybe there's a one in a thousand chance that he turns into a, a role player. But if he stays up here, he's a sideshow victory star. Yes, if he stays yeah. up there, then they just know that that's what LeBron wants. And who cares who the 15th guy on the bench is? Who's the 15th guy on the Blazers bench? No one cares. So if that's... Uh, Danny Moran cares. Well, Danny does. But well, wait it, a minute. It, we it... don't know who the 15th guy is. Isn't that some of the fun? <laughs> well, I guess we do. Do they release the... Do they have the final roster? Is yeah. that out? Yeah. It's opening well, night. They it? better it's have the final night. roster. Who's the 15th guy? I, 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 I can't believe we buried the lead. <laughs> well, it doesn't tell Kumara? you who the fi- No, no. He plays. He's a rotation guy. Yeah. No. Uh, let's uh, see. Could be Bryce McGowan's. Who? There you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Justin Manaya. What? Taze Moore. I want him. Yeah. That's probably what you're looking at. Uh, so, Rupert, you know, is Rupert on the team? I'm going to go out on the limb and say it's Taze Moore. 
Is Rupert on the team? He is yeah. still. Ryan Rupert is still yeah. on the team. And he's an actual, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll get run. Big stud. Well, no, but he's a he's an NBA player. It this is the weirdest thing because like I, I, I hate to say like he ever he could not get meaningful minutes at USC. Just couldn't. He averaged four points a game. And he's really small and he can't shoot and he can't play point guard, and yet he still got drafted. And then he goes into the preseason. He had one of the worst statistical preseasons of any player in the NBA. I mean, it was horrid. The last game of the year against no one, I think he scored like 15 or 16 points. He was dreadful in the preseason, like did not belong in any other world. He, he wouldn't get sent down. He'd just be cut. And then showed up to the combine three inches shorter than what he was listed. But like he's still on the team and, and he played. I mean, it's like, you know, they played when they were up by 16, not at the end of the game that they put him in at the beginning. It's, it's just such a, it's a weird thing. And so, I mean, at, at this point, you got to assume that if, if you're if you're L.A., you've just agreed to go along with whatever. Now they're not going to play him. Play, they played him three minutes when they're up by 16 points. He will not play a meaningful second of basketball. But I could see them saying, "Look, he's never going to play here. He's never. Who cares about developing him? So put him on the end of the bench." And during blowouts or once in a blue moon, when we're up by 20 in the second half, he can go in for two minutes, and it makes LeBron happy. And if that happens. It's not any worse than what happened at USC and what happened in the draft and what happened in the preseason. It just all kind of falls under one umbrella. Cool moment, but just don't ask rational human beings with two eyes and a brain to feel emotional about it because it's it's fake. What if I don't have a brain? Well, then you could probably think that he is going to be rookie of the year because there were people betting on that. (laughs) Yeah, wasn't it like 22% of rookie of the year betting tickets on Bronny? There were a lot of bets on him. Yeah. Bronny. And someone asking the question, does Bronny want this? I would assume. Because, I'd love to know. I would assume because without it, I, I, like he doesn't have NIL. He's I don't not think ri- he has a choice. He doesn't have a choice. Yeah. Well, but but or I guess then but is it's he not the worst. It? Or but like, it's not the worst thing. Like, no. does it suck for him, or does he actually think no. this is cool? It's probably like playing fantasy camp. You know yeah. those baseball fantasy camps. The guys yeah, my do? buddy goes to Mets fantasy camp every year, and and one of these years, I'm like, dude, I got to get out there with you. And like, you know, Tim Tuffle throws you, you know, BP. You're like, hell yeah. Because the alternative is Bronny James would be coming off the bench at like Rutgers and wouldn't sniff the NBA. So, and by the way, he makes millions. Of, he's got his own money. He's set for life. Well, he was set for life anyway. His dad's worth a billion dollars. But he has millions of dollars of his own money now because of this. He's a very sought after guy. So I assume he knows deep down that he's not an NBA player and he's just along for the ride and makes some bucks and. How cool is it for him? Getting some Teddy. Oh, gosh. That dude's knee-deep in Skush right now. In it's, L.A. It's unbelievable. And how cool is that for him that he gets to play with his dad? He tries to downplay and say that that's not something he thinks about. Shut up. <laughs> of course you think about it. And that's got to be a really cool thing because they seem like they have a good relationship. And he seems like a good kid, and LeBron seems like a good dad. So, for All them, right. kick ass. That's enough of that.